Stick around to the end of the video for your chance to win a Star Citizen game package complete with the brand new Crusader A1 Spirit Bomber, lifetime insurance and the Ardent paint scheme. Very special thanks to CAG and full details at the end of the video. So we're a little behind on videos for the channel this week, but that is because this weekend past was CitizenCon 2953, and I will be showing my thoughts and excitement over the upcoming features in another video very soon. But just before the weekend, we also saw the surprise release of a new ship to the game, the Crusader A1 Spirit Bomber. And following on from last year's reveal of this sleek new design, I know many players were eager to get their hands on it. I was making my way to a hangar in the new Babbage spaceport to take a look for myself. Okay, I've just opened up the ramp. The ramp is cool. The first doors we venture inside will take us from the rear component room to the bomb bay and 10 size 5 bombs. Bombs, look at the bombs, wow. I have recently been replaying the Halo games and the way these bombs are set up, yeah. it'd be so cool if they were like drop pods, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up is a small component room ahead of the crew living area. So yeah, component room. <laughs> the two suit lockers immediately stood out, along with the bathroom. By the ramp. A little bathroom with, I guess, a toilet. And a very tiny little kitchenette. You can eat your nutrient paste. Yeah. Two beds right next to the pilot seat, that's kind of cool. With screens, with little screens, that's, that's cool. And then we got the actual cockpit, which, woo, dramatic. Let's go and sit up front. I am not much of a pilot and I've never really done much bombing in the past, but this new ship just beckons to be flown, and so I'd waste no time in leaving the hangar and heading for the skies. Now, as much as it may be fun, we cannot bomb New Babbage. So I'd need to head for orbit and then to another location where bombs can fall under the influence of gravity. Arathorn would be joining me and himself had some ideas on activities that we could run to make the most of the A1's capabilities, but before we set out on our adventure, I wanted to just test a few things myself. I've never done bombing before. Well, not really. <laughs> How does this work? I was gonna go try see if I can find one of the derelict outpost missions. Oh, there, yeah. there should be some guys standing around, right? Descending back to the surface of Microtech, I'd kind of begin to drop bombs before I really knew what I was doing at all. Did you kind of like stumble out of there? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, I heard it. There we go. Now, I don't really know how the bomb site works or is supposed to work, and when I asked members of our Discord server, they informed me that the bomb aiming system is currently not working correctly for either the A1 or A2 bombers. While this is obviously disappointing, it did mean that we had something of an excuse if we ended up blowing up the wrong target during any of this. Arathorn was now with me in his stock paint A1. The paint we see on mine is the Ardent paint, and as you may know, I really do like white chips. For today's adventure though, I'd be crewing on board Arathorn's A1. It was a co-pilot position with a remote turret, and having me aboard to help with the missions ahead would be useful. I really wanted to see how a bomb launch looks from the inside of the ship. What's cool is when you go to bomb mode, the bomb that is going to fall drops a little bit so you, can, so you know which one it is. That's really cool. Launching. Oh, it was not graceful. I mean, it, it was fine. It worked. Launching. Yeah, okay, so they don't, they don't exactly fall straight down. They kind of trail off behind, so they end up like... They do clip into the ship going backwards a little bit. It'd be cool if they did kind of clear the ship before they started to, you know, fall into the weight of gravity. I was making my way to the co-pilot seat where I could investigate the remote terror of the ship. Initially, though, it didn't appear to be functional. Enter remote turret. Okay, so wait, where's this remote turret? It's at the back top. This is repositioning turret. Deploy. Wait, okay, what's that? Repositioning. The 
Yeah. So it does have two positions. Oh, awesome. So this would this would cover your blind spot then. Yes, this is a rear facing turret now. Nice. When the turret was returned to the top position, it did now function correctly. And now it does work in the upper upper position as well. Having the ability to reposition the turret makes this a very useful seat to fill on the ship. You've got a turret on top that can fire forward and, you know, every other direction. And if you need to cover your blind spot behind, you can move the turret down to cover the rear. That's very cool. That's really nice. That's a great feature. I was not anticipating that at all. There were no retrieval op missions available immediately, so we'd taken on a surface bounty at a Caterpillar crash site on the moon Calliope. And descending through the thick haze of the moon towards our target below, it dawned on me that there is another potentially very useful function the rear facing turret can fulfill. I just feel like something that that turret is going to be good for. What you thinking? Deploy it to the rear. And when you were doing your bombing, mm -hmm. I can kind of like watch the bomb at the back, right? Oh, yeah. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Oh, there's the bomb. Oh. oh my god, you were so close there. Wow. That was a well-aimed shot. It looked like it was close enough to kill people. We'd quickly learn that being too close when the bomb goes off can cause a little turbulence. Woo! Whoa, it's <laughs> I think it landed on the target, uh, on the, the crash site. It didn't kill the target then. But, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, we should we should land and go and see how many dead people there are. It was only the one way in or out, right, on this ship. We were on our way in when another kind of enemy threat was spotted. No bombs. Ooh, Cutlass. Have they fixed reinforcements now, haven't they, apparently? Supposedly, yeah. Well, let's find out if that's true or not. There was a patch note, I believe, stating that the reinforcements now work correctly, but here at least they didn't even open the door of the ship. Literally Go opening back. the door. hoping to see if he tried to get out, but he didn't do anything. No. I mean, the door didn't even open, right? I opened the door. The door. So, still some work to do on the nine Toss Cutlasses, but we were on the hunt for our mission target. The mission was still active, but the marker had now vanished. I haven't seen any NPCs, I don't think. No, me neither. If anything, uh, the person we were supposed to neutralize is off to warmer locations. Beach. Yeah. Yep. As you said. <laughs> I'd also find a lumen in the wreck and make an observation that if, like me, you are a fan of the lumen, it's exciting. Oh my god, the lumen is auto now. The lumen is auto. It sounds, it almost sounds like it isn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You grab that, it's got a fresh mag. Alright. And just hold the trigger. Oh yeah? It feels like they are bursts, but yeah, it's, but it's yeah. like you can just hold the trigger. Yeah, it's a weird cycling burst thing. That's interesting. To the I, if only they would do it to the goddamn Gallant, because the Gallant used to be great at one point. Yeah, the Gallant like that would be great. Would be a shame for a Lumen to go to waste, so I was bringing it along with us. I couldn't keep it on my person, but fortunately the A1 has ample weapon storage for both crew members. Placing, placing there you go, Lumen. Works. Privacy on board the Ombo bathroom, though, is a very strange experience. Bathroom door is so weird. It's like, being on the inside of a Crusader bathroom is the most claustrophobic thing. Like, because the door bulges inwards. Really Going there and close the door, it's such a weird thing when you close that door. Oh, that's awful. It feels like it's just going to keep pushing you in further. We couldn't finish this particular mission, but hey, this was day one of the new patch, so some hiccups are to be expected. And hopefully on the next mission we get some better luck. So, during this mission, we're meant to pick up three packages from three different derelict outposts. That's plenty of opportunities to drop bombs. 
Yes. On unsuspecting, or maybe even suspecting Ninetales, who knows. Before we could progress in earnest though, we needed to pick up more bombs, and consistent with the strange way that Star Citizen has been choosing who aboard should bear the responsibility of refueling and rearming the ship on a landing pad recently, today it would fall on me instead of Arathorn to be able to actually complete the transaction. Yep, I can repair and restart. Oh good. Oh my god, 45,000 I think oh, it was. Oh really? Yeah, bombs are always super expensive. So our next stop was back on Microtech itself, and as we made final approach, Arathorn would explain the alternative method of precision bombing. The other way to do it is line up kind of where the target is. I can hover above it and then you just drop the bomb on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Descending towards a derelict outpost with the aim of just bombing it into oblivion. Oh, explosion. Didn't see if it hit or not. Oh, I see the bomb. Okay. The rear tower really does offer the best view. Oh, looks good. Okay, so it's on the hillside just above the actual target. Okay. I wonder if I could shoot the bomb. <laughs> that was pretty close. That one was pretty close. Drop me on the ground, right? And I'll okay. observe it from the ground. That's a great idea. <laughs> I was leaving the ship to observe some of the bombs from the ground, and as luck would have it, we hadn't killed the Ninetales yet. I do see Ninetales moving around up there. I see people moving around. Um, do you think you're far enough away that I can drop a bomb? I think we're gonna find out. <laughs> I'll move back a little bit more. Okay, I'll drop one kind of on the far side. Wow, I even heard it from here. Like it shows that it's going to impact inside the camp there. Damn, the explosion is huge from the ground, wow. Yeah, I was I think you I think you may have got them. I hope so. But once again, the Cutlass was inbound, and at least for Arathorn, the stock A1 loadout would be a bit of a struggle with no gunner on board. Incoming, uh. Ninetales reinforcements. And fire. You up there. I think I'm losing control. <laughs> I'm I'm done for. No, really. <laughs> Durability wise, how did it feel? Um the problem is I had cannons on there and really hard to target with this. It's much more sluggish than like a fighter. Um yeah. trying to maneuver. So I was trying to strafe left and that was a struggle. Now I was making some distance from the outpost just in case Arathorn wanted a clean pickup, but he'd outfitted the ship with repeaters and was coming back. Ooh, so an explosion above me. Not friendly. Yeah! There we go. The A1 has a very limited weapon capacitor for the pilot, so having a gunner in that turret is definitely a great idea. We'd hit the first milestone of our mission, the first box was secure. Package 1 is on board. Great. Next stop was the moon of Cleo, where another outpost was waiting. En route, I'd investigate whether or not the gunner can access the bombing capabilities of the ship, and note that you must deploy and retract the turret at least once before it will function in the top position. Don't think I can, and okay. it looks like as well you've got to um, you have you have to at least cycle the turret position once to go to work. But no, I don't have um, the ability to do missile missile mode right here. We'd find out shortly that missile mode is slightly more complicated than that, but right now it was time to drop another bomb. There was the bomb. Ooh. 
go down the ground to look if you want. Arathorn was landing me a lot closer this time. I, uh, well, am I running into trouble as I leave the ship here? <laughs> yeah, so I feel like I I'm right so. in the middle of it. You were right in the middle of it. <laughs> okay, I took out the guy on the roof anyway. I'm gonna leave some rocks. Go, go drop a bomb. We need to, we need to see some, some explosions. Alright. Explosions do look big. On foot, they look real big. And Arathorn was about to discover that you can queue up several bombs at once, just like missiles. Wait, you can drop four. Oh, you can? Okay, okay, yes. now this we gotta see. I have no idea how this is gonna work. We'll see him. It's a wow. He said it still requires a trigger pull for each drop, so some of his ended up much more spaced out and off target on this run. Oh, there's the last one. So there was still a bit of a delay between them, right? Yeah. You still had to keep pulling the trigger, but they're queued up so you don't have to you don't have to wait very long to pull the trigger. Yep, there it is. Wow. But after such a bombardment, we expected no survivors at the outpost. P4 ammo that dude's carrying. Got the package here. With the package secure, I could return to the ship. Okay, package two is aboard. Can we taking fire? We are taking fire. We We're have an enemy. Fire. Yeah, he just okay, landed. I'll jump on turret. All right, we'll come back around for him. Turns out you can activate some kind of placeholder missile mode from the turret. All it does though is prevent you from firing the guns. Target is targeted. Guns won't fire. Why won't they fire? There is no visual indication that you've changed the mode of the turret either, so it took a minute to figure out the problem. Oh, I got it. Okay, I got it. Okay, firing. Okay. I guess I was in missile mode. Okay, good. Yeah, like that. After the cutlass was dead, I just play around with the missile mode button again to confirm this problem. If I push the missile mode button, I don't get the updates or anything. But it, it does stop me shooting the guns. It puts you in missile mode, but you can't actually do anything. Arathorn had some general points of comparison with the Cutlass Black that he wanted to share with me. The two ships are of similar size and price. I think the nice thing about the Cutlass is you have you have a higher capacitor and you have four decent sized guns all clustered at the front and they're all gimbaled and you have a lot more missiles. You have a ton more missiles on the Cutlass Black. How many missiles do you get on the Spirit? Um, you can get eight size two or... I mean, I guess you could get what 16 size ones if you wanted it by default it's only four size threes which isn't that great <laughs> but yeah the cutlass black is way more capable for combat unless you catch a bunch of cutlass blacks on the ground in which case this is way more powerful we had one more settlement to visit this time on uterp but Oof, that landed so close to the camp. It's basically touching one of the buildings. I'd love to go and see just after the one bomb taking out everyone at the camp or not. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, this is beautiful. Only a P4 on the ground, so. Not long into investigating though, the shadow of a cutlass once again darkened our skies. Oh, I've got incoming. I had not collected the package yet, but getting back on board to assist Arathorn seemed like a higher priority. Entering the co pilot seat now. Okay. I'm good to go. But on a day of strange occurrences, this fight was to be another. Oh, 
lost him. We lost him. He's not on radar. Yeah, I lost him as well. Weird. He just disappeared. Like, completely disappeared. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what, actually? We might, might even need to land to grab it. I can probably grab it with the tractor beam. Oh, okay. Move yeah. this up just a little bit. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Pulling it aboard. All three packages. We have all three. This package is worth, like, 5,000 credits, right, or something? We've been <laughs> through probably, like, 120,000 credits with I know. bombs. It might actually be one of the um, buildings, rooftops or something, which would be kind of cool. We were making the final descent back to New Babbage and I was kind of hoping that this would be a rooftop delivery as the cityscape of New Babbage is very beautiful. I think we're landing on top of one of these buildings. And yes, it turns out that we were in fact heading for a rooftop of New Babbage. Seems a bit big for this platform, but. Oh, it's windy out here. All we had to do now was drop off the packages, but we got thrown one final curveball for the day. I think if we go in here, we should go to drop these off. I opened the kiosk, but there was a problem. The box was no longer something I could interact with, but it was still attached to my hand. This is not a new problem, and I was soon free of it, but following this, that specific box became impossible to interact with by either of us. Oh, well, and not let you deliver. Oh, there we go. Nice to drop it. Yeah, it was bugs, you know, when it's like in your hand, but your hand is down by your side, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. See if you can grab that one on the ground there. I tried to reset it with the tractor beam, but as you can only use the tractor beam from the ship, it would be a little awkward. Can you get the door open? Oh yeah, I'll do that. Let's see if that'll work. Okay. There you go. Okay. okay, see if you can grab it now. Try and. No, I can't interact with it. Ultimately, the mission could not be completed, but like I said, this was day one of a new patch. We'd had some really fun adventures in the A1 spirit and been able to learn a lot about the ship and its capabilities. I am a big fan of this particular ship and I cannot wait to see how prevalent and effective it is at events like Jump Town. The A2 bomber has always been a very interesting factor during Jump Town battles. Can the smaller, more nimble A1 also find a place in such engagements? Only time will tell. I mentioned at the start of the video that you could win an A1 spirit for yourself, along with lifetime insurance insurance, the Ardent Paint Scheme and a Star Citizen game package. If you would like to get your hands on this prize, hit the like button of this video and leave a comment below. I'll be picking a winner from the comments in the next couple of days. And as always, I want to thank CIG for sending such awesome prizes our way. We'll be having another giveaway later in the week and it's all made possible thanks to CIG. Of course, I want to thank everyone at home for watching as well and our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. These people make the channel possible by continuing to support the videos that we put out. I want to thank each and every one of you for your help in keeping the channel going. We'll be back with more from Star citizen very soon.